Welcome to Diane Andrews in Black and White, and I'm your host, Diane Andrews. Thanks for watching us today, whether you're in our 3 million television homes, which will be up on the screen where we appear, whether you're watching us on YouTube, and we just added Rumble. I don't know if you've heard of Rumble, but that's a YouTube-like platform that our shows will be on every show that we do from now on. I tell people to DVR the show or even use us like a radio when you're in your car. Just take it. You can see the shoes later when you stop at the stoplight, but take it and listen to us. You don't have to see us, but use us like a podcast or like a radio while you're in the car. I did a show about six years ago when I started, about five and a half years ago, I did a Common Core show. Today I'm going to do a series that I'm starting on school choice. In the last administration under President Donald Trump, we heard a lot about school choice, but it didn't seem to get much done. Whether that was his Secretary of Education, Betty DeVos, or whether it was the political atmosphere at the time between Republican and Democrat that still exists today, I don't know what it was, but we're going to show you and tell you what school choice really is. School choice basically means the dollar follows the student. In this country, there are 57 million students from K through 12, 10% in private school. So about almost, let's say around 6 million. In Louisiana today, we have 699,000 students in K through 12. That's down 16,000 from last year because of hurricane, the hurricanes out west of our state and our state and other factors, and also of course because of the pandemic. But that was in the advocate in January of 2021. There are 1,400 elementary schools in the state of Louisiana and about 530 approximately give and take high schools. And out of that, 132 are private schools. Louisiana has a higher rate of private schools than most of the country. The country is about 10%, which I stated earlier. But in Louisiana, it's 16 to 18% private. And in Jefferson and Orleans Parish, it's almost a third of the students go to private school. And as you know, private school is not paid through public funds. And that's the difference in a lot of school choice. We have traditional public schools. You have magnet schools are also a part of public. Charter schools are also public, but with an individual founder of that school running that, that school, which is different. And it's mostly low income that are in charter schools. 11% of the state in Louisiana is in charter schools. I have two guests with me today. One I wanted to bring on because I did a Klan show about four years ago in Faraday, Louisiana where the Klan was hot and heavy, the silver dollar group of the Klan. I broke that on television. Mr. David Watley was the first person who desegregated Faraday High School back in the mid-60s. He was spat on, he was kicked, and he was the first guy. I took him back to Faraday. You're going to hear him talk about what it was like going back and what we saw that was amazing in Faraday High School today. At the time, it was seven, 800 students. Today, it's about the same number of students, but four are white. Everybody was black except four white students in that Faraday High School system. So what did we really do with desegregation? We'll talk about that in a minute, and we're going to talk about that's back to the future with Mr. Wiley, and the future is homeschooling. Where I have a guest who we don't talk much about homeschooling, but she's been doing it for four years. She is a former educator herself, and she has a master's degree in business. She has two beautiful daughters, and she's married to Claston Bernard. Come on back to Diane Andrews and hear this first show on School Choice series that I'm doing. Thank you. Come on back. Welcome back to Diane Andrews in black and white with my two guests. As I mentioned earlier, Mr. David Wadley, who desegregated the Faraday High School in the mid 
60s. And next to him is Quantez Bernard, and who is a former educator who homeschools her children for the last four years. I'm going to start with Mr. Watley. He has such an interesting story to tell us that I've heard. This is probably your seventh time on my show, I would think, Mr. Watley. We did a lot yeah. of stuff uh, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I often mention this, uh, when I mention your name, which is quite often on the, on the Klan series I did in Faraday, there was such a hotbed of Klan and burning and killing. The Silver Dollar Group killed eight to 10 people. I went out to Frank Morris's uh, uh, slab of his building. He was the only person in that area that had a shoe shop for 30, 40 years in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and they burned him alive in the building. And that, all of those are out on my YouTube, and I ask people to go because it is a great part of history that you should see. And this man sitting next to us has dedicated his life. He was 19 going on 20 years old. No one would desegregate the school. And they asked him to do it. His grandmother said, okay. Didn't know her house was going to be bombed and with Roy Ennis and Mr. Watley and she inside the house. Tell us about that, Mr. Watley, and then go into when we went back to Faraday High. Yes. Um, uh, good evening. Thanks. Thank Always you for that. Always my friend, Mr. Watley. Yes. Um, uh, Faraday, as you said, was a, a, a hotbed. It, it had more Klan activity, I think, than in any place around. And they did it fascistly. They did it so it was uh, it, uh, no care. They didn't care for what they saw, what happened. But when we got to the school systems, it uh, it, it touched me greatly. I would uh, go um, uh, to uh, to the school system. I had people that was ready to go, ready to to uh, 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 join. But the clans put out the memo that if they did then the parent could look for another job. Mm -hmm. And there was no other jobs in Fairday other than uh, the housekeeping and whatever, you know. So if you lost that, you, you, you was through. Right. So anyway, they uh, decided that, that the risk was too much. They went and started uh, 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 just, I, I think it was kind of a, a uh, uh, thing that they used to make the people afraid. They was afraid to you know, go with the school system. They were afraid to vote. They were afraid to do anything. It was just uh, an awful situation. But um, when... Back uh, then was what you call systematic racism. Today, yeah. I wouldn't say that there is systematic racism. Mm -hmm. We've come a long way in 50 years. Yes, ma'am. We really have. Right. Don't you think, Mr. Watley? Oh, I do. Living through it all? I do. Yeah. yeah because uh, then uh, and now it's so totally different, you know, as, as, as daylight and dark. We you have, have got a first woman happens to be a black woman vice president, mm -hmm. and we had a black president. <laughs> and half right. the mayors in these cities are black women, or mm -hmm. blacks, or That's Hispanic. Right. So where's the system keeping all minorities down? If you That's really right. want to do something in your life. Yeah. You also it, went to the military too. Right, yes I did. Um, but, um, and was a police officer, so he could talk about a lot of different issues. I had this uh, uh, awful type of uh, uh, introduction to the school system because I had to go uh, to the federal court to get in there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the, the system, I had me uh, bound from going to the school because they said I was too old to go, you know. <laughs> so I I went on through the federal system and they decided that I had the right to go. So I now Congress of Racial Equality came down to Faraday. They helped you get right. through all this red tape. And Roy Ennis, who has now yeah. gone on, they exactly. helped you with that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, we had a lot of outside help mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, as you said, the, the Congress of Racial Equality, I was the uh, uh, president of that. And uh, we worked from Faraday to Bugaloosa and uh, all the way down here to Plaquemine and, 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 and so on. But um, that was a, 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 a thing that we were trying to do to uh, assist each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, 
when I went to the, the uh, school uh, after I got the, the proposal uh, to, to do it, I went in and I met all kinds of, uh, I, I say, uh, racial problems mm -hmm. because um, when I go to school, I was under pressure all day. I, I would go to... Uh, when you walked in, I think you said they would form a line, a human line on the side of the corridors, the hallways where mm -hmm. they, you, it was too small for you to get through, and then they'd kick you or spit on you as you walked down the hallways right. sometimes. Yes, yes. yes. The, these things were, was, was quite prevalent, and they would do that on a daily basis. You know, I, I would go you know, finally get through that maze, and I would go to my class, um, and then uh, the teacher would have a, a, a hissy. I mean, as if she never saw a black man before, she would go crying and jump up and run out of the room. <laughs> and, and she goes like to- Like she was afraid of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She goes to the principal and the principal comes to tell me that uh, I, I need to come to the office. So I go to the office and he would uh, tell me that um, I upset the class and uh, I need to go home for the day and I can come back tomorrow. Did you make it through a year? With did they pass you or did they fail you? They didn't have the opportunity. Uh, um, but before I got to uh, uh, the twelfth grade, uh, I was put in uh, uh, another situation. Um, they put me uh, uh, in the military. Right. They, they, they think it's the, the, the president of the school board was elected chairman of the draft board, and he uh, uh, put me in, uh, in the military at the time that the Vietnam struggle was going on. Mm -hmm. So of course I uh, went to the military and uh, um, I was a machine gunner there. You know, I, I, had, I had all kind of uh, problems with the, this, I did it because they said do it. I had no, uh, uh, I would, no, no, no chance to change it because I was told by them if I didn't go uh, into the military, then they would uh, uh, arrest me and put me in, in jail. In the interim, since they didn't kill you when they bombed your house, you got lucky that the, they got blessed yeah. that the uh, uh, bomb didn't go completely completely. Off. Right. That's what happened with the Silver Dollar Group. Mm -hmm. I brought Debbie Taylor into, we did about a six show series over there. Debbie Taylor's husband, father tried to, was the one who tried to kill him. He was a, one of the heads of the Silver Dollar Group of the Klan. I would mm -hmm. suggest anybody watch this black, white, red, or green mm -hmm. to watch that series out there on my YouTube. Oh, yeah. It is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And she apologized to him. She did. Right. And yeah. the mayor, the mayor of Faraday and Natchez were there. A white woman was the mayor mm -hmm. of Faraday at the time, and a black man is still the mayor of Natchez. That's right. So we talk about how things have evolved. When I did this, series, I said, this is about love. This is to show you in 50 years, people have come a long way. Everybody white didn't hate blacks, but they were also afraid of the system if they did anything mm -hmm. different. Yes. Um, and, and as we know, so Mr. When, when we went there and I kept, I had asked already, could I interview some white people? And they said, we only have four. I couldn't believe it before we got there. And those four that day did not come to school. They were afraid, I think, to come to school, to be on, their parents did not allow them to come talk on the show. And you have to believe that they're very poor. 70% of all students in Louisiana, uh, K through 12 in public schools are economically disadvantaged, 70 percent. So those white kids there have got to be the opposite of what you were. Uh, and I'm sure some of the black kids are not treating them the best either all the time. Right. But anybody with money, and, and we're, you know, we're talking about charters, 11 percent still public, magnet if you have good grades, still public, and you uh, application or a lottery. Um, let's go on over then to you, uh, Quantez, a little bit on your homeschooling. Sure. And a lot of people, you know, we, we don't hear much about homeschooling. We hear about charter, we hear about magnet. All of, of those are part of the public school, funded by tax dollars, property and income tax dollars, and other tax dollars. 10% less than that comes from federal, and from state comes the most, and then local, the next amount of tax dollars to fund school systems. 
Now for you, you get nothing or do you get anything funding homeschooling from any, any uh, education, uh, uh, scholarship systems or ESAs that they have anything out there to help homeschooling? No, really homeschooling is really about the parents taking on the responsibility. Right, right. And when you mention all of those things and you talk about the poverty, yeah. you really sometimes you just want to pull back a second. Yeah. You want to pull those kids back, pull your children back and educate them at home. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of things that's going on in the school system. Right. A lot. Especially the public. Especially the public Private, school system. Private, I think, is not... Private, you may be able to curtail a little bit. Right. You may be able to get a little bit of a handle on right. it. Right. But public school, you're... And you're, magnets, you're, I think, are pretty good. Yeah, and magnet schools are pretty right. good. Because they have to have a certain GPA. That's right. They're and really it's a lottery. Not with, many people can get into it that want to get into Those it. children are working hard That's right. to stay in the magnet program. Program. That's right. Public school, you got a different you gotta story. Go, different story. That's a different. Well, end. magnet is part of public, but a slot in for a specific course, thing like STEM or something. Um, yeah. Traditional public school. In fact, I just passed by by uh, the school. One reason getting here, I, it, the line was so long. They're performing arts school That's not great. too far from here. That's yeah, great. A magnet school. However, homeschooling, you're not getting any subsidies right. from the federal government. I still think that the, the dollar should follow the student even to help the parents. Because, parents, you know, it probably prohibits a lot of parents. You're blessed that you have sacrificed you all sure. to, to pay for the, the, for you not working. You're a form of educator yourself. Form, right, correct. What, what, what grade level were you in? In elementary. Mm -hmm. Then I got a business degree. and so Right, you have a technical. master's in business, and, I think. Of course, yeah, and I'm then sure. I did the technical. And yeah. so now I'm, I went from educating the children to educating the parents. Right, right. And so, you know, we're talking about the funds and we're talking about following the student. However, homeschool parents may think a little bit differently of that. Mm -hmm. Because let's think about it. Mm -hmm. When you're getting federal funding, you're getting federal regulations. Mm -hmm. And most homeschool parents do not want any of those federal regulations. Mm -hmm. Okay? Money, anytime you're having fundings, there are strings attached. That's true. But and it also, without getting, I, it's a, almost a little bit of a catch-22. I can't afford to do it, but I want to do I it. I want to do it. But right. I want to do it. And so maybe there are scholarships like these ESAs, and they have different scholarships and the vouchers. In fact, Bobby Jindal started a voucher system here or helped enhance it right. to give money to private schools. Absolutely. From, from the monies. And that is given to poor kids who could, can't afford private. Right. So the voucher system, each one of our last... Governors did some great things. Foster did the leap, the he fourth sure and eighth grade sure uh, mm -hmm. uh, test for the examination. Blanco did some things. I think she helped get raises. And then we have uh, Jindal who did that. And I guess Edwards is working on some things now. He's done some good things. So each one of our last governors has tried to help enhance the education system. But we're still, according to Wallet Hub and Wallet News, we're 50 out of 51 it because they use the District of Columbia as their Absolutely. school system. We are still number 50. Arkansas, uh, Mississippi used to be right down there with us. They've gone up to like 41. But in that grade you by the best, the quality, the safety, we were 49 and sa 47 in safety mm. and 47 in uh, quality. So we still got some, uns this is public, there's unsafe, unsafe schools out there and the quality of the curriculums they're saying is not where it should be. Now, I've read some things the other night that uh, one of the superintendents says we came from such a bad, low place because we do have more students, I understand now, who are passing the AC, uh, uh, passing and going on to college. ACT. Uh, yeah, and passing okay. the AC. Mm -hmm. No, I think the ACT, they're not passing. And they, uh, the scores were oh, worse than they were in a minute. Yeah, and I'm going to look at that and verify that because I have it in some paperwork I have in the well, back. You need the ACT to get into college. That's right. And so there's a lot of catch-22s that are saying we're doing some things right, and they're trying to say we were so down in the hole, it's taking us longer to get out of the hole. So I don't know, but we're still in a 50 out of, out of a 51 is not a good place to be. Well, the thing and about safety it, should be something they could work on pretty easily. Oh, safety should be, <laughs> safety should be a, number one situ yeah. a number one concern. Now, I do, mean, in public schools, you, you probably would know better than me, sure. uh, having children, young children. Um, do they have test kits for guns, you know, like the airport or anything? Uh, some public schools, schools, of I course. Thought they did. But you know what? That depends on which school you're going to in public, your urban I mean, area. Public, I traditional public. Well, well, traditional public, but not all traditional public schools are going to have that. Maybe maybe That's in the it. urban areas mm -hmm. you may need those, yeah. um, what is it, metal detectors. You may need yeah. that in those areas. Do they have any around oh, here? Oh, they do. They, they do. do. Have you, they, they, do. do. Yeah. they do. They do. I mean, I've, I've gone to uh, Baton Rouge Magnet High, and it's beautiful over right. there on, uh, not too far from here, a mile or two mm -hmm. from here. 
And that's a beautiful school, I guess. I don't know if they pay teachers more like they do in private. They make more money. Of course, that's not public funds. That's not public funds, right. What do you, uh, were you shocked when we told you what happened in Faraday? Only four students out of six, seven hundred that were white. That were white. And I think they may have had one Vietnamese, maybe. Wow. One wow. Asian, maybe. Wow. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a sad testament to where we are, I think, because what Martin Luther King wanted and what people wanted back then, most of them, was to judge people by the content of the character, not the color of the skin. So if everyone had stayed there and it was desegregated with a nice blend of all colors, then what you get is a better quality education. I know now the schools are so bad, it's very hard if you can afford to get out of public. And you that's, what, and that's exactly public. what they would do. Yeah. Once you're beginning to make some kind of uh, yeah. income, you know, mm -hmm. really good income, you quickly move. Right. You don't want to keep your children in there, so therefore the school system continues to deteriorate. It's just like the suburbs, when people in the last election, they talked about the suburbs, but I think over half black people live in the suburbs now. Oh, yeah, of and course. they talked about, you know, that's all wide and the vote between the Democrat and the Republican. But people may not know this, but the GDP, the gross domestic sure. product of black people, if you put them together, is larger than the country of Canada. Mm -hmm. So when we talk, black people are not poor. We have a lot of black people doing very well. Very. There are more poor whites in this country than there are blacks, even though they're 49% of the population, yes. and we're 13%, a lot thankful to Margaret Sanger, the eugenist sister who uh, now Planned Parenthood wants to disavow her when they stood by her who started Planned Parenthood in the 30s and wanted to kill all black babies. Of course. That is why Planned Parenthood was started. Um, now they want to disassociate themselves from her? From her, yes. There is I no was reading that the other way. Yeah, you, can, you can't disconnect. They, they, I saw the numbers. We're, we're 13 to 14 percent of the population sure. now. And 16 percent Hispanic. Now, we're not the largest minority anymore. But if all the kids that they killed and planned parents, who had been living, we'd probably be over 20% of, of the population course, in America course. for the last 70 course, years since they started. Course. So when you look at some of the things, now that's systematic prejudice. Oh. That is a system that has you coming down. I was talking to a girlfriend, everybody knows who watches Diane Andrews. I started my career at IBM, and you had to take a test. Didn't matter what color you were. If you passed that test, you had the opportunity to interview to be hired, right? Okay. If you didn't pass the test, you weren't going to be hired. Got it. And people can say, you know, with all this critical race theory and 1619 project that we're talking about now, that the country really started doing slavery. Well, if there was no country here, common sense tells you you don't need slaves to cultivate something that has no crops. Of course. Yeah. That, uh, and I don't know how you get rid of history. What do you think, Mr. Watley, of hmm. all the history? Hmm. No. We're upset that I they didn't produce I our history and show us, so is it fair to get mm -hmm. rid of other people's history? Huh? which is America. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Yeah. I, and I love this country. And mm -hmm. I'll tell anybody, I've been all over the world. Sure. Mm -hmm. I've been to six continents out of seven. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing in this That's world right. like America. I traveled mm -hmm. a lot with, my, with IBM all over the world. Mm -hmm. A black lady traveling all over the world for of IBM. Course. Doing business process engineering on most big companies that you could think of. And that, I remember I went to a Mercedes-Benz meeting. That was my customer up when I was in New Jersey as a marketing manager. I was the only black there and the only woman. Mm -hmm. And they, they had a world headquarters meeting mm -hmm. of all the countries for Mercedes-Benz. And people I mean, I know that I was shocked. I didn't know Volkswagen on Porsche until I went there because oh, Porsche wow. is made in a little town called Stuttgart, Germany, mm -hmm. and that's where Mercedes. If, have you ever seen a commercial with the Mercedes going inside that, that, that building, going through the glass? That is the Mercedes-Benz Museum. It has a big uh, Mercedes sign, which almost looks like a peace sign, right? that is on top of that gigantic building. Uh -huh. And it has everything from Mercedes, his daughter, one of the, that was his daughter's name, uh -huh. her bicycle, until all the cars. Oh, wow. Yeah, so oh, wow. It, it's very, very interesting. So I, I was very fortunate to be at IBM. I traveled the world and very fortunate mm -hmm. to do that. And I will tell you, there's no there place no like place. America. You mentioned no. something no. about history earlier. And so what they do is they revise history. That's right. Yeah. You rewrite so you, it. So you rewrite it. You mm -hmm. make it fit and suit your ideals. Well, they did that with us. They did used to Absolutely. do that with us. His story, history is his or her, her, her story, right? Her story. Right, of course. Her history story. is his story. Mm -hmm. Some people even say that about the Bible, you know, because people wrote the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. But it just depends on, I think you can almost take anything and turn it into somewhat okay. uh -huh. of what you want it to be. It's self-math. 
My undergrad is mathematics. I have a BS in mathematics. You cannot take algebra x equal y and make them something that they aren't. Well, I don't know. Today we're saying math is racist. That's right. And I'm listening at that, being a mathematician. Uh, I have yeah. a BS in mathematics. I have 90 hours. I have eight, eight courses of calculus. My God, how can math be I, racist? I because understand. you're not getting it. Maybe you need a tutor. That's what they, I think they're trying to say. It's racist because a lot of minorities black specifically, but maybe it's back to what we're talking about uh, here. The education the they're education. getting earlier, yeah, right? If you're getting a bad education early, you're not going to pass And it doesn't ADT. matter whom you are. Who That's who right. You are. Yeah, That's right. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. And 70% of our children, black, white, or green, are not eating promptly and they're economically depressed in this state. Now, Massachusetts and Connecticut are number one. I was a, a regional director for IBM in uh, Connecticut. And even when I was there, they were always in the top three school systems wow. in the country. Math, 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 mathematics, Massachusetts, yeah. sorry, sorry, yeah, is number one in everything. Quality, That's safety, great. everything. And they're the number one overall best education system in Connecticut's number two. Uh, so, you know, why don't we go and find out what these people are doing in our public education system. Don't you want to get a model? That's what I've always wanted to do. If I wanted to learn something, don't you want to model get yourself? Model. You want to learn how to sing? Even Michael Jackson, I talk of about course. this all the time. He still had a voice cool coach. Oh, okay. Even then, and, and he would you know, still be practicing dancing. Uh, Gene Kelly, the great old sure, dancer. You yeah, see yeah. his great old yeah, shows on yeah, American yeah. Movie Channel. They still practice sure. all the time. Sure. But if you do that, then you don't have the theory. If you do that, then that means that you are going to take some kind of self uh, accountability. Right. You're going to be responsible. Right. There's no money in that. that that's for, for the people no money who are doing in, race baiting? Absolutely. Is that what you mean? There's no money in but, but responsibility. But I want to talk to the people out there that follow Diane Andrews in, in black and white because you do have to learn how to take responsibility. If you want something in this world, oh, absolutely. you can go after it and you can get it. I may not say this a lot, but I, I do say it. I'm not ashamed of it. And neither one of my parents were college educated. Yeah. My mm -hmm. brother has a mm -hmm. PhD in, in, in economics, uh, and he's doing a business up at the college. But, uh, and I lived in front of a, and I'm lucky I don't have lung cancer, I guess. You know how those prop does in front of a, 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 a cotton field. But it was a nice house. Right. We weren't poor. I never had to starve. I'm not sure. trying to say anything like that. And my mother, my, my photographic memory comes from my mama. These are the two smartest people I, I've ever known, my mother and my father. Sure. So, but you can be anything you want to be in, the, in this world. Mm -hmm. Well, I sure appreciate you yes. for being here. And, uh, and I, I have to tell your husband, you were not shy at all. Right? Oh. Yeah, no, you're not shy. <laughs> but we're like, well, you we're know family. me too. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. family. We're so. family. And Mr. Wally and I are definitely I know. family. We've oh been my doing gosh, shows a yes. long time. He has yeah. such a wealth of knowledge. And, uh, awesome. you know, I often awesome. think Ruby Bridges, Bridges got all this publicity. This man should have been. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, to think about you're going into that kind of situation, yeah. uh, that could break you. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it didn't. He went on to the military yeah. and had Agent Orange over there and came back oh, and became man. a policeman. He's dedicated his life to the service of this country. What an honor. And he's my friend. What yes. an honor. Yes. What an honor. So what thank you again, honor. Mr. Wiley, you're for coming. Absolutely. And thank you so much for bringing me. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you so much.